which came first, athletic training or teaching for you? Athletic training definitely came first. Undergraduate experience, Elon College, 1995, did a little bit of practical work experience, re, re, you know, rehabilitation clinic, some hospital work experience, and then fall of 1997 was when I came certified in athletic training and quickly found out that there's not a whole lot you can do in the field of athletic training with just a bachelor of science degree. So most individuals, after they get certified, will go to graduate school, which is what I did, and then I felt that that was a good you know, stepping stone for, well, where I am today, Catholic College. Okay. 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 So is it hard to do both at the same time? Teaching and athletic training? Yes. At times it is. Uh, currently here at you know, Catawba College, like I said, I teach uh, three four-hour courses uh, during the fall and spring semesters. I've been here for 12 years doing that. Uh, what's so fun about it is two of those classes are at 8 o'clock in the morning, so students really like that. Uh, they both have lab components, and so when you think about what's involved with teaching, all the preparation, being available outside of the classroom setting, uh, you know, just explanation, preparation, grading exams, and things like that, you know, not everybody is going to learn at the same level, not at the same pace. So you have to make concessions for those students. And I enjoy that. I don't mind having to explain. I don't mind having to teach. But sometimes, you know, based on scheduling, I take care of three athletics teams here, men's and women's soccer, and I take care of lacrosse in the spring. So there often is some conflict that exists. So what awards have you won? What awards have I won? Uh, let's see. Most notably, most recently, I won the 2009-2010 North Carolina Athletic Trainer uh, Educator of the Year Award. Interestingly enough, I was nominated for the Athletic Trainer of the Year Award, but because the letter, the way it was written, made me sound like a better educator, I suppose, than an athletic trainer, I guess they awarded me with that. I like to think that I'm good at both, though. So what does it take to be successful? as you are along with those awards and doing both athletic training and teaching at the same time? I think it takes a lot of dedication. Uh, I think it takes a lot of uh, intention as far as this is what you know I definitely want to do. So for me, I've done a lot of things not necessarily, not necessarily related to athletic training. As I mentioned before, I graduated Elon in 1995, Bachelor of Science degree in athletic training. From there, I had intentions of going away to PA school. So from 95 to roughly 97, I worked in a hospital setting and then had a little job change where I then went from the in-hospital setting in radiology to a rehab technician position in a rehab center, which is still affiliated with the hospital. Having gotten into that, that's where I said, okay, I'm definitely going to go more now towards athletic training because I like the hands-on experience. PA at the time didn't seem like it was a good fit. So all of that knowledge that I acquired within the hospital and in the rehab center helped me pass my certification exam in 97. And so when I came to Catawba College, fall of 1999, I had all of that behind me. And so I was prepared to do the teaching. I was prepared to do the athletic training because I experienced all of that at, once again, the undergraduate, at the hospital level, at the clinic level, multitasking, doing you know, things that required good time management skills that we're trying to teach our undergraduate students right now. So what is it that makes me a good clinician? What is it that makes me a good educator? I, I mean, like I said, I don't think I'm any different than other any other athletic trainer because we're all very dedicated to what we do. We all have to perform based on a set of standards and guidelines. We all have to maintain a credential, all have to maintain continuing education. I think it's just what defines each individual is the enthusiasm and the dedication and the positive energy that they bring into the job every single day, either the classroom or the clinical setting. Students, I think, once again, admire me for a variety of reasons. Does that necessarily make me any better than anybody else? Maybe, if anything, it makes me feel good that I want to come back to the job day in and day out.